welcome welcome uh, to the panel digital dragons and today we are talk we are going to talk about reforging failures uh, and uh, just to tell you from the start we are not going to dwell on the negative aspects of failures no way we've got it today experts to tell you how to give yourself wings like a phoenix after uh, you had a little bit of trouble uh, today we've got with ourselves uh, anya comps from kickstarter nice Hi. To nice to have you thanks Here, for having me uh, we've got uh, Maciej Mionsik. Hello, Maciej. Hello. A real Great icon. to be here. <laughs> a real icon in Polish game dev. And we've got David Jaffa. Hello, David. Hello. How are you guys? Um, what can I say? You are a uh, game designer, influencer, and a little bit of journalist also. No. <laughs> Commentator, like that, sorry. <laughs> and I'm just I'm just doing my thing, baby. But no, this this is uh, I've made games. That's how most people know. OK, so, guys, let's start. Each of you uh, have a different experience. Each of you has seen the game industry from a different perspective. And during last more than a year, we all faced really major challenges, especially one challenge uh, in life and in business. And that's called, of course, the COVID-19, which redefined everything we do. Uh, that's why many projects uh, came to life. Other didn't have the luck uh, to come to life and failed. Tell me that at first, uh, Anya, because uh, you see, you watch games on Kickstarter, you watch them mm -hmm. being born, mm -hmm. but some of them don't get enough support to start to, mm -hmm. you know, to get into the air, to give them wings. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tell me, when, uh, when you see such uh, team building, developing their child, and for sure uh, being happy with it, but there's not enough, uh, there's not enough money, there's not enough support, mm -hmm. what then? What to do with it? Is it just the end of the game? Um, I think that's a little bit of a complicated question. Um, I would sort of offer that I view failure on Kickstarter a little bit differently than I think the uh, general term describes. Um, so I think when you look at a project on Kickstarter and it doesn't fund, I think the easiest thing is to think this is a failure, right? Uh, I don't actually view it that way. The only thing that's happened is that your project hasn't funded. That doesn't mean that it's a failure, right? The lifespan of a project can be years, you know, it could be a lifetime depending on what it is, right? So if your project doesn't fund on Kickstarter, uh, what I've seen is that people come back, they have the opportunity to come back to Kickstarter, relaunch, reassess what's going on. So having that opportunity to be able to sort of reassess like, okay, maybe I didn't grow a community. Maybe my funding goal was too high. Maybe this was just a bad time to launch a project for whatever reason. That's more of a gift than a failure in my eyes. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times people don't fund on Kickstarter, but publishers will see the game and they'll say like, oh, wow, this is so cool. This is so interesting. We want to publish this game because we saw the value of it on Kickstarter. Um, that's not a failure. That, again, is just a project that didn't fund, but that ends up being a success. Uh, I've also seen uh, people launch projects and fund and the game doesn't come out because of development delays or you know various other reasons. So if your project does fund and you don't come out with the game, one could argue that that is also a failure. So failure is sort of this challenging thing that we look at and there's a, I think there's a lot of different perspectives as to what failure actually means. To your original question though, uh, what happens if a project doesn't fund? Um, again, you have the option to come back to Kickstarter. Having that opportunity to reassess what's going on is incredibly valuable. So what you're saying is that it's very difficult to grasp the situation when you can say this project failed. In effect, uh, the term failure is a little bit mm -hmm. overused, as I can see it. I think it's not only overused. I think it's also, uh, I think it's misused. I think the term failure is used in, in ways to describe roadblocks and a roadblock is not a failure. Okay, so 
just like Bob Ross. We should see it as little beautiful <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> I'm here to be your Bob Ross, basically. <laughs> I'm just going to start painting trees in the background. <laughs> okay. Um, tell me, David, uh, your history in game industry is quite long. You've seen ups and downs and you've been in the game industry everywhere. As, as a designer, you've seen the publisher's job, you've seen almost everything. So tell me, is there exactly a point when you can say that a project is, you know, this is the end and we have to close it or you just, you know, have to push it and push it and push it? Uh, no, I, I think the, the, at least if you're talking creatively, I mean, when you're talking about, um, you know, if, if you work for a company like I did for a long time, like Sony, there are certain things that, that are not movable because they're out of your realm but even then I, i think tenacity is probably one of the most powerful forces that humans can can call upon and so i mean things you know things things are done when they're done and they're done when you say they're done and so even though a project may be canceled or even though you may lose funding um there are plenty of examples of people who are able to say okay well i'm not going to back down i'm going to find another way and, and there's great power in that um and and i and i don't um necessarily look at that and go that is failure right i i think i think for me it has more to do with uh at least in america the way and i don't know how it is in the rest of the world but uh how how we do look at failure i i think even when people talk positively about failure it's like a bumper sticker Um, but I think until you've really failed, um, and, and gotten the benefit of it, it, it's, 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 it's almost like the word should be rebranded because it's got such a negative connotation. And even when you tell people to, to sort of flip it, it feels like Oprah woo woo talk, which I have no problem with because I like Oprah, but it's, it, it feels like it's just self-help platitudes. But the real truth of the matter is, is, it, is it's a companion to your creative life and to your work life and to your existence on the planet. It, it is a gift that should be embraced and sought out and challenged and, 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 and pushed on. So, uh, you know, a project's over when you want it to be over, but sometimes it's, you, you should want it to be over. Sometimes it's good to walk away and go, what am I meant to learn from the fact that I no longer have the fuel in the tank to fight for this, right? Mm -hmm. So recognizing the right moment to stop, as you say, this is the thing that we should also learn, not just, yeah. uh, you know, keep on going, but recognizing that in there are moments in which we should just say, okay, it's time to move on. That's ab absolutely because those resources can be used somewhere else. And, and it's tricky and you never really know, did you make the right choice or not? Only in, you know, looking back, you kind of start to go, okay, that was good or that was bad. But yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, giving up is not failure. Giving up is, is sometimes, you know, going, I'm going down the wrong road. Okay. Uh, and we've got Anya back. Hello. It's good to have you back. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. It's just the machines. Uh, um, David, uh, would you tell us about, do you have an exact project that told you, okay, that showed you the moment that, yes, here I learned where to stop. Here I learned when yeah. to say goodbye. So, Well, I mean, even the most recent project. So we, we had a project that I adored, which was a game called Drawn to Death. And I, I had spent, I mean, it, it was really a fascinating thing to me. I don't know if it's a fascinating story, but from my experience, I, 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 it, it was, I'd been in the industry for over 20 years and, and it was finally at that point, even though I had been given lots of freedom and had lots of wonderful, you know, fortune to work with great teams to make successful products. It, it was everything I thought I ever wanted. I got the game I wanted to make. I got the team exactly that I wanted to hire. Uh, I got a beautiful building in downtown San Diego that looked like a haunted house. I mean, it was everything that my brain fantasized about. You know, I don't really believe in, in something like The Secret, that book, but one could easily believe in that book if you look at that and go, wow, you got everything you wanted. That's amazing. 
But what was really interesting to me about it was that after the game we made, which I loved, um, and I've loved every game I've worked on, but that one failed. Um, it wasn't that failure. It was the failure after it was basically we were uh, hired by a publisher to make another game. And it was it, it, it that game didn't fail because of us. That game failed because that publisher changed their business model. But I found myself upstairs. We had a loft in the building and I found myself upstairs in the loft on Pinterest a lot more than anybody should have been who runs a fucking company. And it was, it was, it was me. Go, it was, it was finally that revelation of, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I don't, I don't, this is a gift to me that I'm realizing. I, I think I'm done at least for now. Um, I, I, I don't know if I can plant a flag and say that was the day I decided to get out of video games forever, but the ability to sort of recognize and make friends with that thing that you usually run from, which is this sense of, but this is my career. I've been doing this for 20 something years. I've made a lot of money. I have a name. I have, you know, video game fame, such as it is in video games. Um, I, I can't not be this guy. Who am I without this definition? And it was horrible to have to let the company go and all that stuff at a personal human level. But at a growth spiritual level, there was a sense of relief. There was a sense of the realization that that failure had led me to a point where if I could just be with it and learn from it and talk to it and, and really ask it what it needed, uh, it was a guide. It was like, oh, hi, Jaffe. How are you, sir? I'm going to tell you what's next in life. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you've been here all along. He's like, yeah, I've been waiting for you to stop being so scared of me. So that, that was a, an example of the most recent time. Maybe it's just because we're too much getting used to the things we do and the personas we crave. I craved that persona for a very long time. I sure did. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was what I thought I wanted. And I, and I did for a while and I enjoyed it. But, you know, everything has a shelf life and yeah. that one had expired. <laughs> Machi, uh, I'm one of your gaming children, you can say, <laughs> because uh, Electro Body was... Uh, something that's changed my life for good. <laughs> and I'm still coming back to this title, uh, especially in terms of music. But um, this is really this is really ancient history compared to the things you do today. And uh, for last uh, 20 or more years, you've been uh, in the game developing business in Poland. You've seen all the changes. Tell me, um, you've made you've done projects that had both successes and uh, failure failures so um there are people who listen to us who have their brain children they want to make games or they've just made a game they're going to go to publishers or people who are uh, thinking about starting a publishing company so when something doesn't work out uh, when the thing that you think is a wonder isn't viewed as a wonder by other people what do you do with it well it depends you know <laughs> it's there's no easy answer for that uh, sometimes you simply throw in the trash bin basically but there are other options you can finish the game yourself if it's possible you can find another source of funding and release the game and and maybe be successful or maybe at least have the satisfaction of finishing the product and and offering the game to the players. Uh, also, you have to remember that not every time the failure is really a failure because, you know, I, I did a game which is considered one of the worst Polish games, Nina. Agent Chronicles or something like that. I don't. I don't even remember the title. And people are always complaining. How could you do that? Uh, do such mm, such game? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, guys. It's it was a, a work for hire that allowed us to to bootstrap a studio and create two wonderful games after that. So this is the price I was happy to pay, and I I'm not ashamed of making this game because it allowed me to achieve something uh, more interesting and more beautiful. So uh, I don't consider this a failure. And also mm -hmm. I work on the title that, yeah, I have some great gaps in my career, you know, uh, a couple of years or even more that 
nothing came from those years, but I learned a lot during working on the project, working with wonderful people, learning how to not do things. So yes, obviously it was a failure. I, I, I cannot say even what I did because those games never materialized, but uh, well, I moved on simply as that. Uh, so if something doesn't work, try to finish it if possible, because uh, you will learn a lot, you know, finishing your projects and look for other opportunities. You will be more experienced. You will probably know how to avoid uh, obstacles and mistakes. So try to use this opportunity. Yeah, I know it sounds, you know, obvious, but this is how it is. Uh... I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, the exact act of making a game, because uh, uh, where can you fail in that, for example? You say that you have to finish the game. Okay, you finish the game, but uh, when the game is finished and, for example, I don't know, the controls are not response responding or the interface is difficult, the players complain, what are the things that can go wrong? And um, if you've got such feedback, what can you do with it for the next projects, of course? Yeah, yeah, you can fail at every stage for different reasons. You can fail at the beginning. Your idea may be wrong. Your your genre may be wrong. For example, oh, I, I had my share of that. Uh, starting making a game in basically dying genre, only to learn after a year or more of work that it was a bad idea to, to even start making the game. And there is nothing you can do because it's, it's too late. Uh, so you have to be very careful starting your project. Uh, you have to think about the market because, the, uh, you know, we are making commercial games. This is not, uh, of course, we aspire to, 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 to be artists, to, 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 to say that this is, to some, this, this is art to some extent, but yeah, we are making entertainment products. So we have to understand the, the situation, the market. We, we need to at least have a very basic idea about the current trends, about what's, what's hot, what's not, and then make the, the proper decision because it's very difficult to change your course when you, after you start. Of course, it is, it's possible if you have a lot of money, for, if you are very well funded, you can restart your project several times. But in many cases, it's not the option. You have to set the course in more or less right direction and continue and try to avoid any problems. Test, first of all, you have to prototype. Then you have to test your idea with other, other people, if, especially if possible with other industry people who know more, who are more experienced. It's very difficult because they are not that keen to help, uh, but they will give you some feedback. So if you have the chance, ask for feedback, then test with any, anyone. Don't, don't be afraid of showing your idea because you know, ideas are really cheap, really. The execution matters. And then work on your ex execution. So try to create as good as good game as possible. Uh, iterate a lot, uh, change ideas that don't work. Uh, yeah, it's very basic stuff. You have to try test, verify, improve, change, cut, and throw away some stuff which is not working. Don't be too attached to ideas and try to deliver the best game you can. Mm -hmm. So um, I've you, you told, told this interesting thing about the genres and also you, Dave, said about this dream come true project that actually uh, made you walk away from the, from the whole business. Anya, so I want to ask you, uh, do you have uh, in mind or have you seen a project that was, you know, meant to be big and it didn't, went, it didn't go well? And actually the wings were spread, but the bird didn't fly. I mean, I think that's more common in games than not, right? I mean, I, I think if we look at it from the perspective of like games are art and everybody who, if we do sort of a one-to-one -one ratio, every person who makes a movie, that doesn't mean every movie is gonna be a hit. Uh, any, anyone who's a musician, just because you write a song doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna be a hit. Um, it, it, art's subjective, right? Um, 
I would say, I think one of the most famous cases of that on Kickstarter, and it's challenging because this actually made money, uh, but it was not well received by the games community would be Mighty Number no. 9. Um, I think that's a pretty good example of something that was taken from the hands of the original creator. Uh, I don't necessarily know all of the, the finite details, um, <clears throat> but from what I understand, the publisher took that on and decided to creatively direct the game that they didn't necessarily know much about. So while you know the game was out there, it did make money, it definitely was not this giant hit that everyone sort of thought it was gonna be. And that was a pretty big blow to that developer. Um, but I also think that's a bigger question of what is sort of your intent here. I, I get a little bit nervous and a little bit cautious when anyone comes to me and is like, my goal here is to be a giant commercial success. Your goal needs to be finish your game. <laughs> That should be your only goal. Now, of course, make money. Yes, 100%, because we live in, you know, a capitalist hellscape. But that is a, that should sort of be a little bit of a secondary thing. Um, I get a little bit nervous and a little bit cautious when it's like, this game hits all of the metrics that we see. It's a first-person shooter. And we've seen that the numbers behind first-person shooters are blah, 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 right? I don't think putting a formula to art necessarily works. That makes me really, really concerned and really cautious when I, when I see that happening. Um, but along with that, I think um, ukulele was not as profitable as I think people thought it was gonna be. But again, that was a beautiful piece of work and that also helped inspire a lot of other games to come out. So money versus influence, right? kind of depends on who you ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you've mentioned also something very interesting here. I would like all of you guys to, you know, share your opinions on that because you've um, compared uh, video games as uh, a mean, means of art to music, to uh, movies and stuff. I think nowadays there is a sort of, a, you know, um, archetype, a little bit of myth a game creator like a rock star, a person mm -hmm. who creates games and becomes the star of the business, mm -hmm. becomes, you know, the god of players or goddess of players, of course, and suddenly becomes really popular, goes to all the conventions and, you know, just shakes hands and swims in money. Uh, so um, at first, Anya, mm -hmm. do you see people coming to you with such dreams i want to be a rock star slash game dev star and i'm gonna swim in money when i make my best game ever yeah i mean i think <laughs> i think again if you're if you're going into game development going i'm going to be a millionaire you are going to be sorely disappointed <laughs> <laughs> um I, you know it's interesting i think we only have that perception because it's within our world uh rami can go anywhere and people don't know who he is, right? It's only within a very specific nuanced community is he's this big rock star. But like if Rami were to just walk into a coffee shop, nobody's gonna stop him and be like, oh my God, you made this game, right? Um, Cliffy B can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. he, there may be one or two people who are like, oh yeah, I kind of know who you are just based on things because I'm really into games. But the rock stars in our industry in terms of like, forward-facing people are streamers, right? It's not game developers, it's streamers. It's people that are on camera, you know, the majority of the time versus the people that are actually making the game. Um, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I, no, 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 I'll take them. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> We're working on a, a situation here. Um, no problem. <laughs> uh, so I think it's, I think it's one of those things where it's like, so if, if I'm going to use this as a music example, right? So I'm a musician in New York City when I'm not doing game stuff. So that's why I have the one-to-one -one ratio sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there are thousands of producers that exist in music, right? There's so many producers. And so when you think of someone like um, Quincy Jones or T, uh, not TI, um, there's, there's just a lot of famous producers that we know of, right? Um, there's also a lot of famous songwriters 
they aren't necessarily the ones who get the credit for doing the work, but the person who sings the song is the one that you're going to be a little bit more aware of, right? Because they have that sort of uh, outward facing uh, mobility. Sia, for example, wrote uh, uh, countless pop songs for Rihanna and Katy Perry and all these people that are a lot more potentially famous than Sia. Sia maybe is not the best example. Um, but that those artists are popular because people associate a specific song with them. It's the same thing in the games industry where Ninja is popular because he plays Fortnite, but the people who actually made Fortnite are only known within our industry. So it's a little bit of a, the one-to-one ratio is a little bit more challenging. Um, but do I have people coming to me being like, I would like to make a million dollars and I'll, all of my worries will go away and I will be able to go outside and wear my sunglasses and the paparazzi are going to come for me. Like, First of all, why would you ever want that life? Second of all, no, like that's, that's not how this works. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is also a thing to, to, to consider if you don't want to fail dream, but not that big, <laughs> dream rather <laughs> realistic. Yes. Have realistic dreams, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Magic, tell me, um, when you started uh, making games in Poland, everything was, you know, blooming, everything was being born, uh, the, the industry, and of course, uh, the accessibility to the equipment, because uh, it wasn't like, you know, that suddenly in Poland, everybody had a computer, uh, especially a PC. So um, tell me, how many times does a person have to fail to say, okay, I'm an accomplished game creator? And uh, now I can say, okay, I know how to do it. How many failures does, does one have to endure? It is difficult for me to say because I was quite, let's say, lucky. Mm -hmm. Because most of my early uh, projects were success to some extent, of course. Uh, so I, my first failure was, I, I don't know, like 10 years after I started. So, I, I thought that I, I had a pretty good idea how to make the uh, games uh, by then. Then I learned much, much more working on subsequent <laughs> games and realized how, how, uh, uh, how, this, how it was to learn uh, 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 as well. So, uh, well, I think I, I am quite lucky, but on the other hand, I because I started very early uh, and I, I cannot do anything besides making games. So uh, I, 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 I cannot have any doubts about my decisions mm -hmm. and my career choice because this is the only option I have. Of course, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I know. In theory, I could change everything I, I, and become, I don't know, Lumberjack, for example. <laughs> and it's but, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay to be a Lumberjack. Sure. But but the making games is the only thing I can do. Mm -hmm. So for me, failing is not the option. I cannot, I, I couldn't fail because uh, I, after some time I realized that that's, that's the only option I have. So I need to continue. I, I need to improve my skills, improve my knowledge, uh, try to uh, make more games. If I fail, I have to move on and try again because this is the only option I have. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am not a good person to advise on <laughs> on that actually, because I I quickly realized that that's the only way. So maybe this is the perfect advice, just not to consider stopping as an option. I had my doubts. Obviously, at some point, I I. I I had doubts if it was a good choice, a good mm -hmm. career choice, because you know, after 20 years or something, you sometimes doubt in yourself. But then I realized, okay, be realistic. There's no other options for you. So mm -hmm. you have to stay with this and, and be better and try simply as that. Sometimes you will fail, sometimes you will succeed. This is life, that's normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, there is also something positive I can hear in your sentences. There is nothing like an ultimate failure because there is always something, you know, 
after it. Yeah, but I, I also learned pretty quickly to play safe. For example, I, yeah, I try to teach my students that don't invest your own money, for example, in game development. Okay. Because I, I learned this hard way, you know? <laughs> so oh. <laughs> so uh, that's my advice. Try to, to uh, uh, mitigate risk by simply taking other people's money. Of course, if you succeed, you will have to share the success. Uh, but it's much, much easier and it's safer for, for everyone. Okay. Uh, Dave, tell me, uh, because uh, knowing, having those different perspectives, you can also tell us what can help uh, a game uh, to become a success or a failure, because it's not only entirely in the hands of developers and publishers. Yes, there's also the community, uh, there are the reviewers, there's the market, there's everything. So what does help and what doesn't help a game becoming a success or a failure? The, the way success is defined in games right now is so different depending on the scope at which you're working, right? So. Mm -hmm. As of when we're recording this yesterday, Ubisoft announced this new game called Deviance, which I think most people on the internet really find uninspired, uninteresting. Uh, and when you read the press release, we were talking about this on a stream I did last night. When you read the press release, usually there's at least a bit of a twist in the tail, something that's like, oh, well, that's why this one's different. Okay, it's a shooter, but, you know... Uh, you can mess with your DNA between levels and I don't know, something. And when you read the press release, it is the most just basic pedestrian, uh, perfunctory uh, design I think anyone's seen. It's just, the, it's just cookie cutter, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's easy to argue that uh, that is not art and that is not a path to success. But the industry at that scale, at that scope, oftentimes does reward, um, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, the customer doesn't really, you know, in a lot of industries, they talk about the 80-20 rule where you need to give somebody 80% familiarity, 20% novel. I don't know if it's because the price point of a lot of games or the competition for games amongst free games is so much. But that 80-20 rule doesn't, that, that's a luxury, I think. That's that's a luxury in the double A and in indie space. I think if you're dealing with these massive budgets of which with certain games, you're going up into the over $200 million, um, that 80-20 that rule becomes more like 95, maybe 5%, right? Um, because the publishers look at the end results and go, well, this is selling. And this other thing that was really lauded and loved and creative and won a bunch of awards, nobody's showing up for, right? So uh, I think it depends on where you are on the spectrum. What I will tell you is the only real control you have, uh, you, you, I, I think you have two major points of control uh, at, a, at, a, at a meta level. One is obviously the concept. Uh, is it commercial? Is it hooky? Is it interesting? It doesn't have to be. But and, and, and I think it's important to, to recognize concepts and games can be hooky in a way that movie concepts are not. So there's an, there's the idea of an elevator pitch, which is great for a film. It's like, oh, it's about this bus and people are on it. And if it drops below 50 miles an hour, it blows up and this cop comes on the bus and has to save the day. Boom. There you go. That's a, that's a great elevator pitch. Right. Uh, if you were to elevator pitch somebody, um, you know, Mario Brothers. You'd be like, what the fuck is this? Right. I mean, right. Cause you know, but I, I, so there's a way to elevator pitch a video game sometimes that's not necessarily high concept, but is still compelling. And I think I see a lot of indie developers kind of mess this up a lot of times where they'll make something that they want to make really, really bad. And they, and they maybe will make it, it'll go up on steam and, and, and it'll just sit there, you know, and, and won't do anything because there's nothing compelling about it from an outside looking in, like, I want to do that. I want to try that. What is that thing? Right. So I think one of the things you can do to, to try to, you know, prevent, not prevent failure, but, you know, tr try to aim for success, but don't be afraid of failure 
is to sort of really spend time with your concept and, and sort of with your marketing hat on and go, what is compelling? The second thing, uh, and one of the most important things is, is you have to play test the crap out of your game once you get the funding and once you actually have a game that's out there. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, to look back on my life, I, I should have known what would have hit and what would have missed, because even though I put the same level of love and focus and attention into every game I've ever made in terms of just my passion for it. Uh, games like God of War. I mean, I remember we would focus test and not focus test like marketing, but we, we would play test. We would bring in people. I couldn't get enough. I would be like, oh, we couldn't get that guy. Pull that guy off the street. Anybody I could find. We would pull people in as often as possible to play the game. We had a great setup at Sony where we had the TVs and they were upstairs. We were downstairs. The team was in a conference room watching them play. I would take the VHS tapes home for the weekend uh, and I would sit there with a pen and I would write down every single place where someone's face started to kind of lose interest. And I was like, they're getting stuck. Well, that drive, that passion allowed us to basically every Monday come in and have a list of great things we could fix that inevitably made the game better and better and better. Right. By the time I got to drawn to death, those folk, my engagement with the focus test was just like, eh, it's fine. I get it. Okay. They don't, you know, it, it had to be a really big uh, rocket flare coming up from the, the audience of play testers to get my attention of like, yeah, we need to fix that, which really ultimately was a gift to me, not to Sony because they lost some money. But, you know, to me, it was, you're done. You're not into this anymore. You know, you've climbed that mountain. And so, you know, that's, I, I wouldn't l- listen, man, if drawn to death would have been the hit that I thought it was going to be that I wanted it to be, I would still, we'd probably still be making content for it. And we'd probably, and I'd probably still be in that industry. Um, and I wouldn't be as happy as I am today. So it's, it's just, it's a great, it's a great damn gift, man. And I, I wish, I wish we could train ourselves as a culture. I know Anya had talked about a capitalist hellscape, but it, she's not wrong. Um, we, we don't really train ourselves to, uh, look at anything other than sort of surface success as a valuable life. And I think it comes at such a, a huge spiritual uh, 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 cost that, I mean, you know, I don't know, man, I think it's, it's bad news. So as I, as I can see from the experience from all of you, there, there cannot be a good game designer or a good game publisher or just an experienced person without failures. You just have to go through them. You have to experience them uh, to become whole. Is it like this? Probably. <laughs> Difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm sure question. there are, I'm sure there are edge cases, but more often than not, sure. Um, it's a cliche, but if you're not failing, you're probably not stretching. You're probably not trying, but you can also make a lot of money by not trying, um, you know, if that's kind of what you're into. Um, but you got to, you know, it's I, I would say more often than not, you're absolutely right. OK, so last but not least, uh, there are some major titles we all know uh, that uh, were to be big and cost. Uh, they caused a lot of storm of criticism. Uh, just to name a few, you know, like Katana, the last Duke Nukem uh, Forever, I remember, which we were waiting for a long time. There are many in the games like this, even many fans of uh, the long awaited cyberpunk game uh, also said that uh, even though uh, it had its, uh, you know, glory, it was also in a way a failure uh, for the company. So... Uh, Machi, how to deal with such a stuff? You're making a game for, I don't know, 10 years, five years, and suddenly, boom, explodes. And you're left with the rubble. <laughs> well, you have to move on. <laughs> There's no other choice. Uh, you try to fix stuff if it's possible. So I hope they will fix Cyberpunk because I want to play this game sometime. <laughs> yeah, fingers uh, crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you can create another game, hopefully much, much better. You can create The Witcher 4, for example. <laughs> uh, so, wink, it, wink, wink, wink. 
Well, I felt I had to. I had. I had to close my studio at some point. I have. I have to move to other city to find the work. And still, I was still trying my best. And I'm here, and I'm still making games. And it seems that I will do this till I die. So. It's and then normal. you press the, then you press the continue button. Yeah. Or you insert another coin. And other people will <laughs> press F to pay respects, I hope. <laughs> okay, thank you guys very much. I hope we uh with this conversation we will give others wings to fly and uh, give them the message that, you know, this was a really hard time during the past year, but uh, the sun still shines and the players are out there and it's good to make games for them. And Thank tomorrow you. is another day, you know. Yeah, another day, another chance to play. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for your time and for your experience. And I hope uh, we will see each other during and uh, the meetings and Digital Dragons 2022, because it's going to happen also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.